All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming basically with a Rico report because there's a lot of random information included in this video that we're going to be discussing. Of course, some of the main things we're going to be talking about is the fact that the Washington Commanders are now scheduled to interview Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald's after that Kansas City Chiefs loss in the AFC Championship that just happened just a couple of hours ago. And so, we also got to talk about when the Washington Commanders can interview Ben Johnson the soonest. Also, I want to talk about because I've seen on Twitter and random places that a lot of people are saying that Mike McDonald is no longer their favorite head coaching candidate or not even one of their top ones. And I want to break down why Mike McDonald was not the Ravens that the Ravens lost that game. We're going to take a look at a lot of the stats from that game specifically and also some of the stats that he put up for the Ravens because even though he's not my number one candidate, for me, it's Ben Johnson and Bobby Sloick. You know depending on how i'm feeling when i wake up one and two and then mike mcdonald's my third but still i'm seeing a lot of mike mcdonald disrespect out there after that ravens loss also chase young out here looking crazy now the disrespect he's getting on twitter is deserved we're gonna talk about that pretty briefly also I want to talk about why I'm still mad about the commanders passing on the opportunity to take Kyle Hamilton and Jamison Williams. Well, technically or, but both of those guys were there. We had one pick, could have taken either one of them. And Kyle Hamilton being from Atlanta, Jamison Williams killing my Georgia Bulldogs the way he did. I'm just still sick and to see the way that they're performing in these playoffs when it, the lights are at, the, at, at their brightest is just ridiculous. Also, we got to talk about if Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn gets hired as a head coach on another team, preferably the Seahawks, not us, because there's only two teams left that still need a head coach. The Cowboys are reportedly interested in Ron Rivera as their next defensive coordinator. We're going to talk about all of that and a little bit more, but before we do, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Of course, like I said, man, one-stop shop for everything commanders. Any little thing, any big thing, whether it's a fact, whether it's an opinion, free agency, draft, mock drafts, film sessions, everything, man. I got y'all covered. And again, I'm trying to get back to making two to three videos a day, but I'm not going a day without making at least one video because there's so many things to talk about and, and so many things that I'm just even excited to talk about. So man, make sure y'all stay tuned, but let's go ahead and focus on this video. Let's get to it. Let's get it. All right, so now defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is eligible to be hired as a head coach this week after that loss against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's the defensive coordinator for the Ravens. They just lost. Now he's completely available. Now we're going to talk about this a little later, but just to go ahead and put this out there, Ben Johnson is able to be interviewed as soon as Monday, even if they do beat the 49ers, which I mean, as of right now, I'm not sure how that's looking because they were up big and now it's eight minutes left in the fourth and they're down 24 to 27. I don't know how this is going to go but either way regardless of what happens the washington commanders can interview ben johnson as soon as monday can they hire him as soon as monday no and well at least if the lions end up beating the 49ers and they're going to the super bowl we'll talk about that later but no matter what we can at the very least interview ben johnson as of monday we just it depends on whether we can hire him right there on the spot whether he beats the 49ers or not we'll have to wait but on the mike mcdonald side commanders are set to officially interview ravens defensive coordinator mike mcdonald after baltimore's afc championship loss per report from cody benjamin of cbs sports he said the baltimore ravens fell to the kansas city chiefs in sunday's afc championship dropping a chance to advance the super bowl as the conference number one see but that won't stop the washington commanders from considering ravens defensive coordinator mike mcdonald for their head coaching job with the team set the interview mike mcdonald on monday so that interview is already set in stone the ben johnson interview we can interview him as soon as monday but we got to see when that interview will officially happen will it be monday will it be tuesday and again they've gone out of their way to fly to detroit so that they could talk to ben johnson in person so we'll see how that goes mike mcdonald Donald 36 is scheduled to meet with the commanders on the Josh Harris as well as new general manager Adam Peters and other front office executives per ESPN. 
The coordinator has reportedly also drawn interest from the Seattle Seahawks, who could also schedule an interview, while Washington has also been linked to Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson. So I could easily see it playing out to where Bobby Sloyd just ends up not landing anywhere. Dan Quinn ends up staying with the Cowboys. Aaron Glenn stays with the Lions. Anthony Weaver stays with the Ravens. Mike McDonald ends up going to the Seahawks. I think it's going to be between Mike McDonald or Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn for the familiarity, because he was already a defensive coordinator there, Legion of Boom, all of that type of stuff. But Mike McDonald is easily the better candidate in my personal opinion, but he's also less experienced than the Dan Quinn. So, you know, pick whichever one you want to go with. But I also just feel like that leaves us with Ben Johnson. I mean, I already strongly feel like Ben Johnson is only a matter of time to become our head coach. I think is on the way it's loading up because, again, he's the only head coaching candidate that we're flying to. I mean, you could say that maybe we're flying to Detroit to also talk to Aaron Glenn over there, the Lions defensive coordinator. But first of all, what the 49ers are doing to them right now is not looking too great. And then on top of that, I'm pretty sure it's about Ben Johnson. Where there's smoke, there's fire. But either way, man, Mike McDonald is still a top candidate. At the very least, in my eyes, I strongly feel like the odds are highly on Ben Johnson's side of the whole situation in his favor. But I feel like Mike McDonald is still a top candidate. I feel like, honestly, if we're talking about realistic-wise, Mike McDonald is probably a more likely candidate than a Bobby Slowick at this point. Because, again, all of these other teams have already hired their head coaches there were like eight head coach openings six teams have already hired their guys now it's just us and the Seahawks and there has to be a reason we're waiting on the guy that we're waiting on right now I'm just assuming and I feel like it's safe to assume that whoever we end up hiring as a head coach within the next week two three weeks whatever is somebody that was in either the afc championship or the nfc championship because if we had another guy that we prioritized that we liked the most we would have went ahead and hired him along with the other six teams who previously had head coach vacancies that and now they've already filled them so i'm pretty sure this is not necessarily i mean a lot of this could be due diligence but i feel like it's more so than anything the guy we want the most is still coaching right now and i'm willing to bet money that is ben johnson but there's also a chance that it could be a mike mcdonald and anthony weaver uh or an aaron glenn as well those are like the top four candidates at this point in my opinion because again why wait if, you, if your favorite guy, if it's Bobby Slowick, which clearly it isn't right now, if it's Bobby Slowick, you go ahead and snatch him up now before anybody else even has the chance. You lock that door and you get him to put pen to paper. I feel like with as aggressive as we were about getting Adam Peters in as our general manager, having him, Ian Callahan, and Alec Hallaby competing for the one GM spot we had available, I feel like we'll be that same exact aggressive with our head coach. And I feel like that's probably Ben Johnson. But either way, Mike McDonald is still a top head coaching candidate out there anybody would be lucky to get him because honestly I know the Ravens lost that game but it wasn't because of the Ravens defense or Mike McDonald himself or anything like that the Chiefs only scored 17 points do you know what the Chiefs have been doing to people this year they've been scoring 22.3 points per game he held them below that average They've been out here getting 354.8 yards per game. He held them below that average with only 319. They've been averaging 109.3 rushing yards per game this season. The Ravens held them to 89. When it comes to passing yards per game, they've been averaging 245.5 yards per game and the Chiefs only had 230 compared to that, which isn't like a dramatic difference, but still. Yep, the 49ers just scored. Yep, Ben Johnson, go ahead and get ready. We're about to go ahead and hire you on Monday, but still, even just sticking with Mike McDonald, I really want to emphasize that that Ravens loss to the Chiefs was not his fault. It is not his fault that the Ravens are not going to the Super Bowl right now. So I don't want to see a whole bunch of people saying that they give up on Mike McDonald as a top head coaching candidate because of that game out of any game this season. Speaking of any game this season, what Mike McDonald did to who we consider our top head coaching candidate and Ben Johnson, arguably the top head coaching candidate available in this entire hiring cycle, no matter which team 
scheme you're talking about, what he did to Bobby Slowick and CJ Stroud twice this season, what he did to Kyle Shanahan, who was killing Aaron Glenn of the Detroit Lions de defense right now, and what he did to Mike McDaniel's Dolphins, arguably most explosive offense in the NFL, holding all of those teams to 19 points or less in each of those games, and again, holding the Chiefs to 17 points is not Mike McDaniel's fault. So if you want to go defensive minded head coach you can argue he has the highest ceiling of course he doesn't have the most experience he's never been a head coach before so if you're talking about experience you have guys like bill belichick you have a guy like dan quinn out there but if you're talking about ceiling biggest boom potential mike mcdonald is still that guy as far as defensive minded head coaches go but again like i've already explained in several videos several live streams the challenge of hiring a defensive minded head coach yeah your defense is going to be great but what's going to happen with the offense because even if you do hire and find a, a diamond in the rough and an offensive coordinator a guy because most offensive coordinators let's start there hiring the first one is, is difficult because geniuses like bobby slowick and ben johnson that have already proven that they're great or looking for head coaching opportunities otherwise they'll just stay where they are as an offensive coordinator if they're going to leave their current organization they're leaving for a severe promotion from offensive coordinator to head coach plain and simple so you got to look around at other teams and see okay maybe the passing game coordinator here maybe the qb's coach here maybe the tight ends coach i know there's a thing with tight ends coaches where they tend to succeed at a higher rate as offensive coordinators at the nfl level so the guys that you already know even Easily, without even having to question it are great offensive coordinators are getting head coaching jobs they're not coming to you to be an offensive coordinator and then even after you find that diamond in the rough offensive coordinator that un underrated guy the prodigy that nobody expected type of thing even after you find that guy then you have to worry about another team taking them with within just a year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator Dave Ganales is already gone to the Panthers as their head coach after being the Buccaneers offensive coordinator for one year so now the Buccaneers you can arguably say it's between luck, it's between skill, talent evaluation, whatever. They did a great job, whatever it took, to find an offensive coordinator that can unlock Baker Mayfield. Now, after just one year, they have to go through that whole process again? Look at Bobby Sloak. A lot of us were talking about Bobby Sloak being a top uh, head coaching candidate out there after only one year of being an offensive coordinator for the Texans. So the Texans were at risk. It may be still are. You never know. Bobby Sloak may end up being the head coach for the Seahawks. I highly doubt it. But the Texans are at risk of bringing in Bobby Sloak to be an offensive coordinator for the first time in his NFL career his entire life. And after only one year, they got to try to find the next Bobby Sloak. You know how hard that is? So again, I love defensive minded head coaches. I really do like a Mike McDonald. If you're gonna go defensive minded he is your guy plain and simple but the reason i lean towards offensive minded head coaches is because when that guy is running the offense and, and you know he's the head coach i mean what promotion could he get more than being the head coach of a team so you don't have to necessarily worry about ben johnson after you hire him as a head coach to get poached away and take him but from another to another team as their head coach or anything like that you just got to worry about your offensive coordinator potentially leaving but it's ben johnson's offense as the head coach but when you have a defensive coordinator boy oh boy and granted teams do take other teams defensive coordinators just like mike mcdonald being considered for a head coaching job right now but it's not anywhere near as likely i mean even benjamin albright tweeted it out that basically when defensive minded head coaches are going into these interviews this hiring cycle he tweeted this like last week or a few days ago or something like that they literally have to approach with the plan like this is what i plan to do an offensive coordinator and not only that this is what i plan to do after somebody takes that offensive coordinator this is my backup guy that i'm ready to bring in the offensive minded head coaches don't have to do any of that when it's concerned with the defensive coordinators at all i mean they, you have to do it to some extent but it's nowhere near this level of severity that it is for a defensive minded head coach trying to keep finding new offensive coordinators to come in and ball out for them and hoping to retain them long term now let's also talk about ben johnson because look at him man that boy was cooking especially in the first half boy that first half looked like a master class man twin them had them boys teed up over there man but honestly though aaron glenn had kyle shanahan and the 49ers in a box the first half which is very noteworthy because again i want to remind y'all that i honestly give him the most credit for that lions win over the rams because ben johnson had a good first half and then a bad second half versus now falcons head coach ex rams defensive coordinator raheem morris but 
Ben Johnson's kind of doing the same thing again right now with a great first half and an ugly second half, but Aaron Glenn wasn't there to kind of, you could say, bail him out like he did in that Rams win earlier in the playoffs a couple of weeks ago. So Aaron Glenn not looking too good in the second half right now. Neither is Ben Johnson, you could argue. So, But man, when they came out firing, Twitter was crazy for the Burgundy and Gold fan base. We were all on Twitter super excited. Like, boy, that's our head coach right there. It's not looking too great right now. Hopefully, Ben Johnson can pull it together um, by the end of the game. But, boy, you got you got to get it together, Ben Johnson. You're our future head coach, man. We, we need you to ball out. Also, Brees Hall, a running back that has nothing to do with the Detroit Lions right now, tweeted out the way that they're using Jameer right now is a running back's dream. Ben Johnson has running backs from other teams salivating about being in the offense that he runs and being debuted like that. Come on, dog. You got to remember, Jameer Gibbs is a rookie. Also, man, I love how dominant the Lions offensive line has looked, especially for the majority of this game, man. It's been ridiculous. Jared Goff's job is way easier because of it. Even Ben Johnson's job is way easier because of it. And like I already reported, like Tom Pellicero and a few other people around the NFL have said that whoever hires Ben Johnson as their head coach, it's very likely that he brings his offensive lines coach to be his offensive coordinator. So one of our biggest problems with Ben offensive line, especially since Bill Callahan left, we may have a, that may be like a package deal. Not only do you get Ben Johnson, but you get the guy that's turned that Detroit Lions offensive line into one of the best offensive lines in the NFL as well as your offensive coordinator or whatever he wants to do hire him to whatever he wants to do with as great as he's been with the Detroit Lions offensive line man because they're talented but he's also maximizing that talent whereas I feel like we've had talent that hasn't been utilized at his best ability for the past few years and especially under Ron Rivera now also just to put this out there shouts out to Nikki Javala for this if the Lions win this and the commanders really want Ben Johnson as their next coach they'll have to wait until February 12th to hire him at the very soonest now right now they're down 10 with a minute 37 left and they're trying to score some points to win but it doesn't look like that's the case so it looks like we should be good to go but if somehow they find a way to pull this out and by the time a lot of y'all are watching this the game will be over so I'm gonna look stupid anyway but just stick with me they can and are scheduled to interview him a second time this week as of Monday at the earliest, but a hire can't be made official until after the Super Bowl if the Lions win tonight. But again, it's not looking very likely at all right now. And then again, ever since the second half, it looks like Ben Johnson is probably become going to become our head coach sooner rather than later. It's definitely looking that way. Also, shouts out to Mark Bullock for pointing this out. They are interviewing Ben Johnson and others this week. If the Lions win and the Commanders haven't hired a head coach by the end of this week, you know who they're waiting on. But again, it looks like the Detroit Lions are not likely to win this. So we're still up in the air right now. But say in a scenario where somehow the Lions win this, and if we still don't hire a head coach until after, well, leading up to the Super Bowl, it shows we're going after Ben Johnson. There's no way of hiding it at that point. But now it's still kind of up in the air. Detroit Lions looking like they're about to lose. Mike McDonald just lost. So now we don't necessarily exactly know. It's not super clear from everything that we're hearing, from all of the reports, rumors everywhere. And again, where there's smoke, there's fire. But it's not just super definitive. But if we were waiting until the Super Bowl, after the Super Bowl to hire our head coach, it was clear who we were hiring. There was no debate about it. But on the positive side with this scenario, now we get to hire him sooner, potentially. And it also looks like, man, let's go ahead and talk about it. It looks like we jugged the 49ers for that late third rounder, boy. If you, if they knew that Chase Young would play like that, they wouldn't have given up a third for him today. They would gladly take their pick back right now. You could have them. 49ers saying y'all could have them. Y'all could take them back right now. You could take Chase Young back right now, immediately. We'll fly him out for you. We'll pay for everything. But I'm sorry, 49ers, man. No take backsies, man. No take backsies, though. But he's not looking good right now. It's bad. Like, lights bright. You see the plays people putting up on Twitter where it's not even a lack of talent. It's a lack of effort. Like, it's bad. Also, I want to talk about the fact that Kyle Hamilton 
was literally mocked to the commanders by the vast majority of mock drafts when he was coming out of the draft and then we just decided to pass on him and trade back and at the moment i was highly upset about it because kyle hamilton and jamison williams were both available and again jamison williams as a georgia bulldog fan i know just like with cj stroud coming out of the draft after what he did for ohio state against my georgia bulldogs in the playoffs i was like oh yeah that's my qb1 for sure now without question I know you had Bryce Young and a few other people out there, but after that, what he did to my Bulldogs, I was like, that's all I needed to see. That guy's different. Same thing with Jamison Williams back in the when he was coming out of the draft. What he did against my Georgia Bulldogs, I was like, that's all I need to know. That's my favorite receiver in the draft right there. I don't care what's going on. And then Kyle Hamilton being from Atlanta, it just sickens me to see a hometown kid out there doing it for another team with my commanders easily we had the pick before Ra the ravens and we chose to trade back and it's crazy because to go back to my original point it looked like a smart idea after a while after it settled a little bit like especially by the end of the draft you're like you got Jahan Dotson a decent receiver you know not necessarily the highest ceiling doing it but a guy that can come in and contribute immediately you end up potentially getting like a franchise quarterback and Sam Howell at the time that's what it looked like Cole Turner and Brian Robinson is a top eight running back in the NFL quiet as kept so I mean I did yeah I mean at the end of the day you could still say maybe that was a decent trade back but to not have Kyle Hamilton right now where he was all over the field for the Ravens he literally shut down the entire drive himself first second third down was the one single-handedly making plays dominant we should have him on the team and then Jamison Crowder we easily had a chance to get him and the way he could open things up for a team man taking the lid off of the defense allowing everything underneath to be open because you gotta worry about Jamison Williams every play and even just horizontally sideline to sideline the way they're giving them the ball out of the backfield and just stressing defenses out that way is just unfair man it's just crazy that we don't have them right now and then speaking of the reason why we don't have them right now the Cowboys could have interest in making former commanders head coach Ron Rivera their defensive coordinator if Dan Quinn leaves for a head coaching job and that would be pretty funny because I mean Ron Rivera is a better defensive coordinator than he is a head coach and definitely better at that than being a talent evaluator I would say that's the worst thing between time management and talent evaluation I feel like those are the things Ron Rivera is the worst at but defensive coordinator he's actually pretty straight but he doesn't strike fear in my heart so I you know I'm not necessarily celebrating if the Cowboys hire him as a defensive coordinator but I'm also like okay that's cute yeah watch what Ben Johnson does to that Ron Rivera defense yeah I can't wait but at the same time though it's not worth it if we end up hiring Dan Quinn as our defensive court as our head coach like if we have to hire Dan Quinn as our head coach for Ron Rivera to end up the Cowboys defensive coordinator that is not a fair trade at all and if anything Cowboys fans will be laughing at us so please that's not worth it now if we hire Ben Johnson as our head coach or Mike McDonald or somebody like that and then Ron Rivera ends up going there because Dan Quinn went to the Seahawks perfect best case scenario in my opinion but also shouts out to John Conn for this tweet Washington has five interviews set for this week Anthony Weaver Mike McDonald Dan Quinn and I'm sorry y'all after further review Dan Quinn had to reschedule his second interview so this is his first in-person interview coming up his second interview overall including the virtual one this is not his third just wanted to clarify that Aaron Glenn as well and Ben Johnson all of that is being done this week the only day that we have super confirmed is Mike McDonald from Monday everything else is kind of like as soon as possible I'm assuming I'm surprised that Ben Johnson is a Monday because I was hearing reports as of like a week ago that we were literally flying to Detroit to interview Ben Johnson as soon as possible like Monday type of thing but with Mike McDonald's schedule for Monday are they flying him to Detroit so that they can also go in and interview Ben Johnson while they're there or are they trying to interview Ben Johnson in the morning in Detroit and then fly back to the DMV or to Josh Harris's mansion in Miami where we secured Adam Peters are we flying Mike McDonald out to one of those spots to interview him? I don't know exactly how that's going. Just all speculation there. And also, Ian Rappaport had an interesting report saying that Johnson and Quinn have been considered to be the top candidates for the commanders throughout this entire process. Please know Dan Quinn. If it's between Dan Quinn and Ben Johnson, the answer is very obvious. And then also, owner Josh Harris wants a full look at each candidate. And the commanders might even have finalists 
after the second interviews for more conversations and maybe bring people in for a third interview rather than just hiring a head coach immediately after we interview everybody this upcoming week. I hope to get this done as soon as possible, but at the same time, I'm not questioning anything Josh Harris does. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt in every way possible because so far, everything he's done has been excellent. He's shooting 100% from the field right now. So whatever he decides to do, I'm going to trust it, especially now with Adam Peters there to also help as well. So, hey, man, now it's looking like the game is pretty much over as it is the commanders will be able to hire their head coach this week if they either want ben johnson mike mcdonald aaron glenn or anthony weaver because all of those people were officially eliminated today i mean it's 53 seconds left they're down three it looks like it's pretty much a wrap right now and dan quinn has always been available for a couple of weeks now and we didn't hire him so that's why i'm like not believing the fact that he's even a top candidate when people keep saying that because if he was we wouldn't have, wouldn't have had to hire him i know there's due diligence but you clearly prefer ben johnson over dan quinn if dan quinn has been available for you to hire for the past couple of weeks and you're waiting to interview ben johnson and mike mcdonald so dan quinn is probably one of the top candidates if you consider top like top 10 or top five but i don't think he's even close to number one i think he's honestly third or fourth at best but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video please stiff on that like button stiff on the subscription button and stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the commander's content of course let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of this i'm trying my best to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible i'm probably just gonna sit down tonight now that i've already done two videos today well like one was like late last night slash early morning like 7 a.m and then now i'm doing this one instead of doing another video tonight maybe i'm gonna try to focus on replying so as many comments as possible when i can so i really appreciate y'all stay tuned man if you're not a channel member go become one because we're about to start working on film sessions for the draft prospects that we may potentially draft to the commanders and those are exclusive videos strictly only for channel members no ads no nothing so stay tuned i appreciate y'all catch y'all later i'm out